It's the life, kids. It's the life. This ain't the life. This ain't the life, baby. Love and hip hop season. I don't know. An episode, y'all already know. I don't know that shit either. Let's go and get into it. Let's talk about Papoose and these struggle ass bars he was serving us this evening. Papoose, I'm knowing that you got some stuff going on. I know that you're dealing with the situation with your wife, Miss Beautiful Remy Ma. But those struggle bars, child, he said, I'm going to fade them. Barbershop. Girl, if you don't get these tired ass Nicki Minaj ass raps, girl, honey, I'm need you to go find Biggie too so he can help you out because that shit was whack as hell. But nonetheless, I love Papoose. I love Remy Ma's relationship. It's beautiful. It's everything that I want to be. Captain Planet I'm going to tell y'all who I'm really tired of, honey. The old lady game, aka the creep squad. Girl, if y'all don't creep y'all ass on out of this damn shit, I'm tired of looking at y'all ass. They are the most corniest old men I have ever seen. Every time I see the creep squad, I'll remind it just smells like depression and um, Piccadilly's canned food, okay? So the old lady gang talking about what they need to do, um, DJ Self and Slim Joe's relationship, and it needs to get better. And, you know, they just happen, they crunk and they dance around, and DJ Self still not feeling Slim Joe. He just not ready to let him in the Gwinnett squad. I'm not even sure what the Gwinnett squad is. Do they live in Gwinnett County? Girl, somebody explain this shit to me. So Snoop from The Wire ends up popping up, and she just like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, girl, she walked her ass up looking like Stuart Little, girl. Snoop from The Wire, girl. Snoop from The Wire ass. I don't even know why she's still talking. Like, what relevance does she have? What is her purpose? I want to know. Snoop from The Wire, other than being Stuart Little Jr., what are you doing here? Child, Snoop from The Wire ass was so damn crunk like she was standing over some damn telephone books while she was talking. Snoop from The Wire. Girl, get your lame ass on out the damn way. So the ladies finally, you know, get off the plane. They finally arrive in Bahama Breeze parking lot. Y'all ain't telling me shit that they ass was in <laughs> Mexico, girl. Nothing about this whole trip looked like they was in Mexico. Girl, they was at Bahama Breeze patio table, girl. They had, can we, we got a party of 12 coming. Can you get some tables set up? I just was not feeling this shit. It just looked watered down. It, it was the most watered down trip I've ever seen on any reality show, girl. But this shit was just looked so whitewashed and so watered down. By the way, let me tell you about some turn up. Juju talking about she got a book that she reading. Girl, I'm just like, Juju, if she keeps talking about this damn book, she look like she hiding the damn words up on that damn wig. Girl, what Juju, what type of flour or what type of yeast you're using? Because it's like your wig got a yeast infection because it keeps rising up, girl. It's rising up like the damn Atlanta Falcons. Get your shit together. All these wigs this season, a wig ain't supposed to. A wig is still a wig. Baby girl, your wig is sitting higher. What that wig is? What that wig is? That wig. Has ended, bitch. Girl, Juju say something else about this wacky ass book one more time. I'ma smack her ass with the goddamn Harry Potter book. Got this little and it, what's so funny when everybody looking at the book and stuff. It look like ain't number twenty pages in that shit, girl. She done wrote a damn magazine, girl. Get out of here, bye. Game and rise, and she just like I got a lot of work to do, but normally. You know, I got some stuff normally I got to do, but this time I'm just gonna turn down. Bianca's here with me, but she gonna be working. I want to understand what Bianca is supposed to be working on. Bianca ass is not doing shit. You've been talking about her album for two decades now, two seasons. You still have yet to get one. All the people I'm checking for right now is BBOD. Stop that delicious. Stop that delicious. That bitch over there. She don't do dishes. That's the only person I'm checking for. They put out some cute music, honey. That cute singer was cute. Bianca can't do shit for me. She can't find out why her damn braids sitting in the back seat of the damn Uber. Mariah Lynn throws up. She walk up to Bianca. She's just like, yeah, bitch. I'm here, girl. What's the tea? Bianca like, girl. I already got my braids in the back seat, but I'm going to have to put them in the front seat, girl, because the airbag's about to push your white ass into the pool, girl. Get out of my way. So Bianca and Mariah Lynn, you know, have went through it the situation about her talking to Drewski and all that type of stuff. Drewski was in a relationship and you know, Bianca ass was trying to get Drewski's white peen. Mariah Lynn you know, kind of put some words you know, Mariah Lynn didn't take up for Bianca she was like, Bianca, you wrong. Which Bianca, your ass was wrong. So Mariah Lynn and Bianca's relationship is kind of rocky right now. So Mariah Lynn said, you know what? We're going to get over there. We in Mexico. We're going to enjoy ourselves. That's hood. They talking. Next thing you know, uh, Mariah Lynn said, girl, she, you know, we did have a little incident. I'm going to have to get payback. So she pushed her in the water child. We just went everywhere. Mariah Lynn, titties were popping out of nowhere. I'm just like, Mariah Lynn, girl, you need to get some type of Elmer's glue or something to glue down your wig because I'm so tired of it always looking like it's about to disappear. Like a wig ain't supposed to be there, baby girl. Don't Oh, we're supposed to have power, but that wig, no. I just, the wig is just, it's, it's too much for me and my homegirl, so I'm gonna ask you to get that wig together. Mariah Lynn, you be all in the bopping and shit in the confessional shit, your wig is like it's about to fly off. No, 
Help loose and Remy Ma talk. And Remy Ma's just sharing, you know, a little bit more of the story and how she feels um, about losing um, her child, you know, whatever, you know, the situation that happened. And it's sad. They got the sad music playing. Papoose is just like, he's just, you know, comforting her. And, you know, Remy Ma just feels bad because she's just like, he asked for this and I cannot deliver it. And I guess Remy Ma feels like she's not a woman, but Remy Ma, you know, you still are a woman. You're, you're successful. Or as you're doing something, like you you doing the damn thing and I'm proud of you and everything happens for a reason. I just feel like, you know, maybe it's just not the time right now for you to do that. Your career is popping. You're doing a lot. Like you're doing a lot, way more than you were doing before you went to jail. So it's just like, girl, you know, timing is everything. And honey, just because that door is not open right now does not mean that you can't walk through it. It's just not your time, girl. You ain't got the right key. But real mom, I'm checking for, I love her and Papoose's relationship. And I just hope things get better. I think they will get better. They get out of Bahama Breeze parking lot and they go inside Bahama Breeze and sit down. Girl, let me, I'm just gonna keep telling y'all, they just do not look like they was in Mexico. They turn up, work fast, twerking. Bianca on the twerking on the counter, she getting crunk as hell all in this whitewashed ass Mexican restaurant, girl. It's just, it's just everything about that restaurant did not give me Mexico at all. It did not give me Mexico. It looked whack as hell. But she in there dancing, she moving the groove, it don't stop. And Yandy walking in, you know, and I, and I do will say this, I do apologize for saying that Yandy had contacts in, color contacts, but she's still like a damn frog in her face, but girl, I like her. She's cute or whatever sometimes, but those are her real eyes. Girl, I got about a hundred thousand people told me, them her real eyes. Okay, girl, you her optometrist? Okay. So you ended up walking in, she got her little dress. She's like, uh-uh, what's going on? You know, she talking, she's sitting down, she talking. And what's name like, girl, I think that's um, Bianca over there. But Yanny said, uh-uh, she's supposed to be working. She's supposed to be working. So she go there and talk to Bianca. She said, Bianca, you're supposed to be in her working. What are you doing? What, like, you're supposed to be working. You're out here dancing. You think it's fun? Bianca like, girl, I I'm, you know, having fun, like you're doing this and that, like, and I feel like you can know you got a lot going on, you got stuff going on with your husband being in jail and this, you got baby mama drama stuff going on. So, you know, I'm just having fun. I'm just like, I'm trying for the life of me understand why is Janice so pressed about Bianca doing, what is Bianca supposed to be doing? She, she supposed to be in Mexico having some type of booking and she hosting an event and she, you know, hosting a party. Is she auditioning for American Next Top Model? Is she auditioning for um, America Who's Got Talent? Like, what is she doing? What can she be doing in Mexico? Writing lyrics? writing songs, recording. Nobody is checking for her ass in America. So damn sure ain't nobody checking for her ass in Mexico. That shit was so stupid. I was just like, y'all looking for a storyline. Just like I don't believe that Juju got a damn book. Juju on the beef ain't got no damn book, honey. She ain't, she ain't got shit. So I'm just like, y'all in the storylines are draining the shit out of me. It's draining as hell. So I'm just, what is Bianca supposed to be doing? Yeah, and to tell me, you can barely get Juju's career lifted from the damn grave and shit. Like, what is Bianca supposed to be doing? She ain't got no shit going on. She ain't, she might well go John BBOD too. Be a bad bitch on dick or on dicks. Kim Bella has a come to Jesus moment when Yam and she just like, you know, it's been a lot going on and I just feel like you ain't, you know, doing stuff and this stuff with Jules and his career. Cause Yandy ain't giving Kim Bella no tea or no information about Jules, whatever he's supposed to be doing as far as his record and his music and his career and he working at Ace Cash Advance. It's just like, what? he's supposed to be doing and you know Kim Bella been on Yandy about that and Yandy just been pushing her off just like girl I can't mix this business stuff with our relationship because I can't my friend but this is this is my client I can't so you know Kim Bella just crying and she was just like I just want to know if the check coming in the mail because these folk calling us we understand Kim Bella you need to know yeah, like, girl, it's okay. Everything's okay. We're just gonna have him do a couple more scenes for Love and Hip Hop. Make this little paper. Hopefully, he'll have some music out. By the time the reunion is filmed, he can put the little song up after the, you know, before the commercial break, and we'll see what happens. Absolutely nothing will happen because nobody's checking for Jules Santana. And his attitude on the show has just been real funky, so I'm not interested in buying a free goddamn album from his ass. Now, Jules might have me download a mixtape, and bitch, you right here stealing my damn credit card information off my MacBook. I'm good. So, Kim Bella tells Yandy, we can work together. Girl, yes, y'all. I can work together. Maybe I can open up some type of tax agency or some shit. But we get to the Gwinnett team and we about to be my brother's keeper and all this silly shit. They around here getting hype and crunk and shit. Slim Joe walking out and, you know, DJ Self around here with a mark on. He said, you know, I want to welcome you to the Gwinnett team. Child, DJ Self then wrote all on Slim Joe damn shit. And Slim Joe was like, let me take my jacket off so security have enough time to grab me so I won't hit your ass. That shit was so silly. Oh, that shit was so damn stupid. That whole scene was dumb as hell. Then after they said, bro, it's just Mark. First of all, bro, don't write on my damn car. First of all, that's Mona Scott's car any damn way, so don't be writing on her shit. They right out here getting crunk and 
They around here look like they about to fight. Ain't shit finna go down. Them Joe didn't even look like he even know how to tackle. How you built like a linebacker, but you don't know how to run? Girl, go sit down. Or whatever the linebackers do, girl, because I only watch football during the Super Bowl. So, and I probably won't be watching them this time. They got Lady Gaga up there singing this shit, girl. Hopefully, Beyonce pop up out of a balloon or some shit, because I'm not here for it. Slim Joe feeling this shit, you know, the chitness and shit. He ate early, make him feel himself, so he ready to get crunk. He like, ah, am my brother's keeper. Girl, you don't get your Malcolm wide looking ass out of here, girl. She told me, she ran here getting crunk like we finna follow her ass. When it huh, huh, huh. Girl, she doing all this dumb shit and just like, ah, I was looking at her ass crazy as hell. Like, like, Slim Joe, what are you doing? What, what is you over here doing? Like, what's your purpose right now? All this, this crazy shit that you got going on. Is you doing something like, he was just getting crunk, just getting crunk, just, and I was just like, girl, this shit is so damn lame. The old lady gang, the, y'all just, y'all can't be called the creep squad. Like, that shit is stupid. Everything about y'all are grown ass men to my child in a goddamn fraternity that does not exist, that does not have any type of LLC, no, no nothing, no nothing, girl. Y'all don't even have a tax ID number. Shut the f up, please. So Yandy is reading Juju's pamphlet, <laughs> or whatever she wants to call it as a book, and Yandy said, you know, I'm starting to feel like that, you know, some of these things relate to me. I feel like she done took some stories, and, you know, these stories are me or whatever. Yandy says, I need to have a conversation with Juju, so, you know, they all have dinner together, and Yandy gets straight to the point. Yandy, like, you know, I read your little book, and I feel like, you know, I'm in a couple of chapters, and you got this story going on about folks, you know, you know, stalking folks on Twitter, and making fake Twitter accounts, and, and, and pages and stuff, so I'm just like, are you, this is my story? Juju like, girl, your ass ain't relevant enough for me to write about you. Like, you're the only bitch going through some shit. Juju was just shooting off like, girl, how dare you try me like this? You try to make my book about your ass and I can barely get this shit off the shelf? Like, girl, you got me screwed up. So Yanni just like, girl, I'm just saying, honey. So I'm not sure. Kimbella is like the um, referee with that shit. She's just like, you know, Yanni, you not coming to her asking no questions. You coming, you coming off as a mean girl. Yanni was. She did have her face, you know, looking all snobbish and she like, ugh, I'm not here for that. And, you know, Juju just shot off about it. So, she mad as hell about it. She mad as hell. And, girl, it looks like the damn Mexico trip finna turn into a disaster. I'm not really surprised. It looked like a disaster anyway. Y'all got your ass off the park like a Bahama breeze. But, girl, she was cute. I want to know where I can find Juju's book at, honestly. So, this episode was really boring as hell, to be honest. The only funny part was seeing Amina tell myself, Peter, we can come back. We can, we can, I can come back to you, Peter. My mouth looking like a pencil sharpener once again, okay? And I guess Peter Guns is Nick name is uh, number two pencil because that's what the fuck he built like. So I'm not trying, I'm not sure if Peter Gunn finna sharpen his uh, pencil with uh, Mina Butterfly's mouth again. So girl, I'm just, this shit is stupid. Amina and Peter about to get together. Peter thinking about it. And the other dumb ass girl, I can't even think of her damn name. Is she knocking on the door? She don't, I don't even know both of these women names to be honest because both of them are dumb. Oh, both of them are dumb. She knocking on the door. Let, let me in. Hello, mom. It's Kenya. Girl, and Peter Gunn's just not interested. How many times y'all gonna run back? I'm telling y'all now, Loving Hip Hop New York. I do not, I've been doing good without seeing shit about Amina Butterfly and that other dumbass girl laid on the floor. I'm not interested in shit they have to offer us. Their storyline is dead. No one cares about Peter Guns and his two interesting um, individuals who are following him. Too. Next episode look like it's gonna be alright, honey. They're kind of slowing down, so I guess the reunion about to come on any day now. But y'all tell me what y'all thought about this episode, and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye!